uh, work a union job, be a wise guy, and, and, and do all his charity work. The man, I just couldn't figure it out. There wasn't enough time in the day for the stuff that he did. So, but yeah, I was about 16, 17 when I started engaging in, in different activities. And when did that life end? Uh, it ended the day that he died. That would be May 26th of 1999. That was the day that I had turned around and said that, you know, my father bred me my whole life in honor and loyalty, honor and loyalty, honor and loyalty. And I just said, ask myself, this is not honor and loyalty. This is, this is, uh, this is vindictive. This is vicious. This is not business. This is personal. I mean, um, you know, once once my father was gone, I knew that that life was going to be over. I had two choices that I had. Was, it's either I suit up that night, with, like I did, and go out and I figured I had a 24 to 36-hour window to try to get whoever I thought was responsible, but I didn't know who to trust. So I remember my father telling me during the war, that's every guy you take down, two guys pop up. You take out two guys, four more come back. You take out four, eight more are going to come. So, and, you know, during the war, that's what happens. And I remember him, him explaining that to me. So it was a no-win situation, you know. Plus, at that point, they would, instead of giving my mother what she deserved every week, which should have been about four or 5000 a week at least, they were offering her 600 600 a week, I think it was. And and they wanted to go to the house, knock on the walls, bang on the floors, and they wanted the money. So it was either kill them and go to jail for the rest of my life and never get to see my wife and my son, or do I heed what my father once told me that he wished death on someone before jail. And I thought about that for a long time. And I said, you know what? Killing them is too easy. There's no suffering. You know, what am I going to do? Shoot him in the foot, then the knee, maybe the thigh, and work my way up, make him suffer. What is that, that going to do for me? Then I can't look at my son. I can't look at my son with a, with, with, uh, with a pure heart, a pure mind. So I chose, it's funny because after the, the night that my father died, all these, uh, I don't want to use the word limericks, um, I can't think of the right word to use, but all these these words that he used to say to me started to come to mind. Um, for instance, to give you for example, um, he used to tell me that if I can't hold a picture of my wife and my son or my loved one, knowing that I might not be able to see them for 20, 30, 40 years or for the rest of my life, then don't do what you're about to do. And it's funny because that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly why I didn't uh, kill Jackie or Allie. Did you ever kill anyone? Um, no. What did you consult your wife about these things, or did she play a role in your decision making? Um, my decision was made strictly on my own. Uh, I brought it to her afterwards. Uh, probably, probably about maybe 20 minutes for a half hour after I spoke to, uh, Detective Pommie Gage of the NYPD and, um, uh, Special Agent Gary Pontecorvo. Uh, when they approached me, my wife, my wife was about 20 minutes later. She was afraid. She was worried. Um, I, I just, they asked me what I wanted. And I said, I don't want anything. I said, I want you to leave my mother alone. Whatever from money she finds is hers, and the house is hers. And please don't bother because she is in no shape or form or health-wise to be bothered. And they agreed on all, all those things. And they're like, you don't want nothing for yourself. I said, no. That would defeat the purpose of what I'm doing. I'm doing something because I feel it's, it's righteous, the right thing to do. So for me to accept money for it, I don't want it. Um, you know, obviously, after when they took me off the street and I didn't have a job, obviously, I didn't have a choice but to take like, whatever the stipend was every month. But, um, uh, go ahead, go keep going, my friend. Um, 
one thing I, I, I was around the sex industry for, for more than a decade, and one thing I was always struck by is that everybody else in the industry thought that there were people who were worse than them. So, you know, they'd say, oh, so and so is a degenerate, or yeah. know, because they're a drug addict. So, even all, everyone I knew in the sex industry had these a really strong, if arbitrary, set of moral principles whereby. You know, some people were just bad, and other people were, you know, righteous, even if they were like dealing in mm -hmm. um, Did you ever read? It's like I'm sorry. It's like did you ever read Machiavelli? Yeah. You heard of Machiavelli, okay? Where the yeah. ends justify the means. Yeah. It, that's exactly what we do. It's very parallel what you just said and what I just said. It's it's completely parallel. You know, we we could always find the means to justify what we're doing or what we are going to do, whether it be I want fame, whether I want fortune, whether I want notoriety, uh, whatever it is. Like you just said, I agree with you a million percent. Um, so this one and that one, go ahead. Yeah. You are saying, so you were saying, like, you know, this one is... It, yeah, know, yeah, this, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm assuming it's the same way in, in organized crime, that someone's a gambling addict or a drug addict or, or a, a pussy addict, that like exactly. fellow, fellow, fellow gangsters would regard them as degenerates. Exactly, without a doubt. You know, and you know, and I was brought up with my father, who was old school, and I believed in. You know, I don't know if you know, but there was an article that came out after they found his body, and uh, I don't remember. One of the reporters uh, had emailed me, and I just said to them, I said, you know, the, the least they could have done was have the decency to take his shoes off. And all of a sudden, that became like a big fucking joke between everybody, like, you know, people who hated what I did, you know. And, um, you know, that is a sign. It's an old-time sign of respect that a guy such as my father who was so well-respected and well-known, um, if you took his shoes off, that means it was strictly business, okay? He liked the guy, but he had to go. And they didn't. Whether they thought about it or not, I have no idea. They're probably, they're probably too fucking stupid to even think of that. But it's true. So, you know, even in that regard, even when you're killing him, you couldn't even do it the right way, you know? So, you know, my, my, my whole outtake was is my cooperation was, I, was obviously it was, it was staggering because I broke them from... From the, I, I mean, I, I took the reins away from the first girls that had held on to it for decades. So now they're finished. But um, my point being is that, like, you know, what, what's, you know, what, what is going to happen next? There's nobody out there. You know what I mean, Luke? So there's kids coming up. Okay, there's kids coming up. You know, in these days now, what's going on with all sort of electronics and what the FBI has, nothing but time and money? Who, who are you going to trust? If you're a 70-year-old gangster and he wants to keep his shy, his shy bug and his horse bug going, you some dumb kid, you see he's working on the corner, you see he's making money, somebody brings him around, because they see money, they think he's good, all of a sudden, you got an informer in your crew. So, you tell me, I mean, when you, if you ask me where this, where this whole thing is going to go, as far as I'm concerned, it's finished. It's done. It died. It died. I love I love John Gaddy Senior to death, but he ruined it for everybody. He really did. You know. But, How do but, you know Ken Kenny Gallo? Um, Kenny and I met through. I don't know if you know who Joe Campanella is. Yeah. Um, Joe, oh, you do know who he is? Okay. Exactly. Well, Joey had had put up a site. Uh, it's, called, it's not together yet, but it's called AddedAlife dot com. And with a phone number, so yeah, just one day I was on a computer, I came across, I said, fuck it, let me call him, you know. And I got him. So he was like so blown away. And he had mentioned to me about this, this Hollywood Mafia site, you know, they're talking about something to say, and they're talking about your old man, you know, because I was asking him, well, you know, why'd you put a web page together, you know, who the fuck is going to call you for two ninety nine or a dollar ninety nine a minute, you know, to listen to what you have to say, you know. Tell you're a lawyer. So, um, anyway, uh, he, he just told me about this Hollywood Mafia thing, and 